Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Debs. Today we're going to talk about art and craft. Craft can be seen as functional, reproducible. It can be seen as an object. Mm -hmm. I suppose in contrast, if you think about art, it's still a visual expression and it's still something that's been made or creative i think what does set it apart is the expressive nature of art the imagination that goes into art as well in contrast to having that reproducible thing and in terms of its form as well it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical object so it could be a film or like an installation or a sound recording or something like that so that's slightly different as well although I do think there that there's a lot of overlap that we can talk about as well in this episode which will be interesting if we just talk just very briefly about those differences then the object is the biggest difference that I see Mm. there when you talk about an object something like an art form where it's a visual film or something like that Mm -hmm. yes that isn't so solid that's the thing that Mm -hmm. I thought was quite interesting reproducible yes we have for example if you were doing a wet loads of load of wedding invitations you were doing a load of cards and you were doing them in craft you could do a paper craft that was absolutely reproducible it might mm-hmm. have very slight differences and it would still be handmade so all of these things are handmade they're mm-hmm. made individually but sometimes you can actually get tuition which says do this do that do the other and what i noticed when i was going to classes where people were teaching me step by step it was really interesting to see even with the same colors and the same steps if you were having a visual painting quite often people produce different paintings even if it's just the strength of their color or Mm. their contrast and not only that if you looked at the same group of people and then looked at the next painting what you could actually see is that the one person who painted with bold colours would also paint with bold colours somewhere else. Mm. So that's almost their voice coming out. Yeah. Now, what I don't know enough of is, it does that happen with craft as well? And to be fair, maybe so. I think so, because if you're thinking about it, you could have, say, two people that knit scarves and mm. one is likely to take it in a completely different style to another person. Somebody could be using a really chunky wall and creating something that's really quite bold and quirky. And then you could have somebody that's doing a more of a traditional knit. So I suppose that is different personalities coming through. But also, say for instance, they had the same pattern, and the same needles and the mm. same wool. Mm-hmm. I still think you'll get one that is a tighter knitter than the other, for example. Mm, Their tension might be different. So you're still going to get slight differences, aren't you? Still get individual, yeah, takes on it, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So when we actually discussed this, I think that we found that it was slightly woollier than what we Mm, were expecting. That we first thought. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And I think it led us to think why... Is it woolly? Has it always been woolly? We were going to talk a little bit around the history of it to get this discussion going. And it gives you a bit more context, doesn't it, as to how things have changed over time as well. Because I think traditionally you could probably fit art and crafts into completely different boxes more neatly. Whereas now I think there's a lot more overlap between the two disciplines i started having a look and thinking back to different sort of art movements the one that i immediately thought of was the arts and crafts movements um which happened about the time of the industrial revolution and it was a rebellious art period because with the industrial revolution coming in there were more things being manufactured everything looked the same with that kind of era of technology So to rebel against that, artists were doing things in more natural forms, which led to the 
Art Nouveau period, which was nature inspired, lots of organic forms and curves and things like that. But I thought it was really interesting because it's called the arts and craft movement, which Mm. they're saying that crafts is influenced by art and arts influenced by craft. So I do think it was a bit of a turning point in terms of materials as well that artists were using. So you had artists such as Renee McIntosh, who's a Scottish architect, furniture maker. He also did paintings. He categorised himself as an artist, but if you were to look at, say, one of his pieces of furniture, you could also argue that's craft because it's a functional object. It's something that's handmade and it's something that somebody else could make, obviously given the time and the, the skills to produce something. So the thing that he was saying made him an artist Mm -hmm. is back to what we were saying before that's because he was coming up with an original idea himself yes yeah 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 with the forms and and everything Mm -hmm. that were in the furniture Mm -hmm. maybe Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether it's (laughs) arts or crafts yeah although later on we will talk a little bit about how it perhaps is perceived which is slightly different so Mm. that's where it matters i think but from my point of view I still do craft I do it because I'm exploring the materials for my art Mm. but sometimes by going through a step-by-step of how to do something it shows me how to use the materials it is tricky I think it's a tricky definition I think it's interesting when you're talking about materials as well because the progression of different materials that are now available to everyday people in terms of paints and things like that that would have been I imagine quite difficult to get hold of or you'd have to make your own paints I think that's also changed how accessible art is to people to make you're an acrylic artist Debbie yeah absolutely and if you think about sorry there's two things going on here in my head (laughs) so accessibility look at hobby craft Mm. Yeah, you could have so many different yeah. forms of craft or art. Yeah. And hobby craft does provide, it's arts and crafts. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say this is a craft shop and you're going to have to go over there to go to the art shop. Yeah, You do find that there are shops that are more geared towards art. Yes. So, yeah, yeah for certain, absolutely yeah. certain. But... Hobbycraft definitely provides paint too. So you can use their materials in different ways. And I think that this is something that is really interesting. So following the arts and crafts movement, I think it was 1930s, Mm -hmm. acrylic was invented. Although I think of acrylic as being around forever, it hasn't been around forever, Mm -hmm. not at all. Mm -hmm. Because of that, because of the development in technology, we've also had a huge development in materials. Mm -hmm. And not only have we had a development, so this is a new paint, really, Mm -hmm. it's less than 100 years old, this is Mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. We're in an amazing, from a a mixed media artist's point of view, (laughs) an amazing period of development even things like collage yeah yeah mixed media did not exist in the same way no i don't think Uh, so sometimes it takes a particular well-known artist to actually bring something to be considered as acceptable in the art form so we were talking a while ago debs weren't we about cubism and picasso yes and the invention of collage although it wasn't the invention of collage it was like collage was kind of George Brack yes Picasso went out for something I don't know he went out yeah and he came back and George Brack had ripped something up and put it back together yeah and cubism's born they were just like wow this is amazing (laughs) this is abstraction truly abstraction yeah I mean it excites me yeah really excites me because it's what I want to do. I Mm. want to take the elements of what I see outside that I'm paying attention to and Mm -hmm. put them all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, Mm. to me, is where my art is going. So Mm. therefore, that is really interesting. But I think going back to materials, not only did 
the acrylic uh, arrive it's developed over time and it's yeah. been developed yes it's been developed by manufacturers but it's been developed by artists because mm. artists have turned around and said can you slow down the drying time mm. can you make it thinner can mm. you do this with it can you do that with it and so many options have been developed with mediums etc i could talk about materials all day so we're not <laughs> going to do that <laughs> but going back to arts and crafts i think that maybe bringing in acrylic and mixed media because acrylic makes it so easy to do mixed mm. media as well mm. it acts as a glue it does all sorts of things that mm. other paints don't do in the same way even things like layering and stuff's easier mm. it's, it's lots of things so maybe that has also created differences in the definition of arts and crafts more of a yeah. merging i i think traditionally and, art was always seen as something that was a luxury thing and aesthetically very highbrow so that introduction of new materials of materials that are more accessible to using an expressive form is definitely something that's changed over the last say 100 years and talking about accessibility, people had to make their paints. Exactly, yeah. yeah. They, they had pigments. It's incredible, isn't it? And they had to it? mix the paints. Yeah, yeah. So it, that's not so accessible. Imagine getting started as an artist back then. You'd really have to be committed to it, wouldn't you? And have a real belief that this was the, the right thing that you wanted to do. You had to stretch your canvas. You had yeah. to make your gesso. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about it, mm -hmm. or those that were successful had people in studios doing those things for them. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have yeah. ready made canvases with pigments that were poisonous. Yes. yes. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was just thinking about materials and thinking as well about very contemporary art that uses non traditional art materials. We've got conceptual art now that you don't necessarily need to have a skill to create it. You could just put together objects and that would be a visual form of expression. I don't think you could say the same about craft. Yeah, I was trying to think. Trying to think so, of an example, but I think... From an art point of view, you're talking mm -hmm. about conceptual art, mm -hmm. like the Tracy Emmons, a very famous one, yeah? Yeah, Tracy Emmons' bed. Yeah. Installation art that just uses materials that you could put together, but the real focus is around the expression, the ideas around the art that makes the piece. Yeah, performance art as well. Okay, art in that form is definitely around ideas and making other people see something. Yes, and Does it's about the sense? experience rather than yes. the physical object. Let's try and think of a craft that has that interpretation. I'm just thinking about when you walk into an amazing church with the architecture. Sorry, we'll talk about architecture mm. now. But that's an yeah. experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Still a bit woolly. Yeah. <laughs> it's still an object. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And is it repeatable? Probably. Whether you'd want to repeat it, probably not. Yeah. But that's another yeah. matter. Yeah. So if we were to do an abstract piece, you wouldn't be able to repeat it. It would be different mm. at any point. Mm. I know that we sound like we're being a bit woolly. It's not just about exploring the definitions of things. We're going to move on to explore how that means that people see it. Okay. Bye for now. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>